by Kay Lee. Chapter 25 I can't believe you let me do that. I can't believe you talked me into it. How did I ever think it was a good idea? I helped bring a child into this hell of a world. A child! This was a change. For once, Damon was the one listening to Aisha as she raved about the injustice of their situation. The anxiety of the baby and the stress from the night before had finally caught up to her, and the woman was having a breakdown. She'd been pacing for well over 20 minutes by the time he'd found her back in the generator room. She rarely went down there, but the soldier knew that it was the one place to find her if the clinic, med, and her tent were devoid of her presence. She'd once told him that the hum of the generators helped her think, and with the only metal floor in the city, she felt less exposed down here. Do you realize what's going to happen when that child starts crying at all hours of the night? Half the people in this glorified fishbowl are going to be in an uproar, and the other half are going to want one of their own. I know with Max staying here, I mean, I know he could be the link to a cure and all, but are we really doing this? Letting a man float under a roof? I don't care what Nandi says, that's dangerous. What if he bites someone? What if he... Damien cut her short when he grabbed her as she passed by. He wrapped her in his arms and cooed gently. Breathe. He knew she wasn't really worried about any of these things. Well, he hoped she wasn't as upset as she seemed. She'd always trusted his decisions before. It's going to be all right, he said, trying for reassuring that the sight of the usually immovable woman in such distress was affecting him. If the baby gets too loud, we'll move Amara to the clinic, where no one will hear her. We've taken precautions to keep Max secluded. The woman began shaking in his arms, and the front of his shirt became damp. Worriedly, he pushed her to arm's length. The track streaming down her cheeks highlighted amber red by the soft glow of the cedar-celled generators that surrounded them. Please don't cry, he begged, entirely unsure of how to deal with this. He thumbed the weight away, only for it to be replaced. I know there's a lot of uncertainty with everything that's been going on, but we'll get through it. He tried to comfort her as best he could. His gauntlet hummed at the panic stir in his gut, but he tried to ignore it in the hopes that the doctor wouldn't notice its active state. We survived the outbreak. I promise you, we'll survive a toddler and two new men species. He gave her a smile that he prayed was more reassuring than he felt. It'll be a piece of cake. It must have worked, because Aisha cracked a watery smile of her own, and the scout felt his heart clench in his chest. You're right, she hiccuped. You're totally right. <laughs> she sniffed hard before she unclenched her hands from his shirt and rubbed her eyes. Sorry you had to see this. I'm such an ugly crier. You're never ugly, he countered, the words slipping out before he'd even fully registered them. Her head tilted up to look at him curiously, but Damien had never been one to turn coward before. Now that he had said it, he may as well spill the rest. In this hell of a world, you are the one constantly beautiful thing. Don't ever doubt that. The conviction in his tone was obviously a little much, because a blush rose to her cheeks. He didn't want to think about the fact that the timing was entirely inappropriate. To admit the feelings he'd kept secret from her since he'd first seen her taking Marcus out at the knees, because he'd carelessly scratched her BCA. When was the last time you slept? He asked, changing the topic. Can someone call chicken? I can't remember, Aisha admitted. At least she sounded a little calmer. I've been on call for Amara for the last three days. I think I got a power nap in about an hour before she went into labor. She scrubbed violently at her eyes to get rid of the evidence to her minor meltdown. You're right, I'm probably just tired. I'm not usually this emotional. <laughs> you just say that like I didn't have a moment last night. Damien chuckled awkwardly. It's been a stressful week. 
I'll walk you back to your tent. You can get some sleep while your biocardio appliance does a thing. It's a blood chemical analyzer, she corrected, but sleep did sound like a most wonderful idea. She cracked a small smile when the scout held out his arm to her. She took it and he didn't complain about how she leaned against his side more than strictly necessary. And I know you know that, she insisted offhandedly. He didn't deny it. Instead asked, Do you think it will turn up anything? Well, it didn't for Kale, she hummed. Though, I am still surprised you let him go up for breakfast. He was cleared, Damien shrugged. And you know how he gets when anyone tells him he can't do something. This is something new. Alicia reminded him. We don't know if there will be any other side effects. Damien raised an eyebrow at the woman curiously. Aren't you usually the one who's telling me to be gentle with him? That's when he's just off his meds, she grumbled back. This is entirely different. You're being awfully accommodating considering your moment last night. The scowl returned to the soldier's face, and he had to take a deep breath before admitting. Dylan threatened to leave the tower if I retaliated. He grit out dryly. And you believed him? Aisha frowned. He wouldn't. I said the same thing, Damien huffed. He just told me to try him. I've never heard him sound so serious in my life. The woman took a long time to reply as they waited for the elevator. Would it really be so bad? She asked softly. I mean, we don't really need to go out on missions besides from foraging. And he isn't the only tick. Maybe it would be good to separate him from it. At least until the caffeine withdrawal hits. She tried for humour to lighten the mood. But it didn't quite land. Damien shook his head, and Aisha could feel tension rise in the man beside her. She waited, but he said nothing. There's something you're not telling me, she hummed softly. He nodded. Her mind whirled with possibilities, but she didn't have a chance to press him on it before the doors opened to reveal a very distressed Chi. Ndi said to come quickly, the nine-year-old hammered out so fast, in another life he would have made a half-decent rapper. I think something is wrong with Kale. What did he do now? Damien sighed, more to himself than the kid. I don't know, she answered anyway, but Silas is holding him like a princess. He pointed up, and the two adults followed his finger. Above them, chaos was unfolding in the lab.